If you think it's going to rain, take your rubbers. You won't die, unless you fall in the river. <laughs> well, if we're going, we're going. That's enough if you're driving. I uh, don't think I'll have quite enough. Can you cash me a check, do you think? Perhaps. How much? You have blood on your ear. Hmm. Shaving. Yeah. yeah. She's gay, our madam. Huh? Yes, our madam. <laughs> you wouldn't have come unless your peel had failed. When is it? Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning. So what do you want? What can you get from me? I have nothing to tell you. alone. There's plenty of others out there walking about. Deserve to be where I'll be. What others? Why should I tell you? <sighs> Why not? This was about four years ago. Yeah, four years. I had a pal called Victor. Victor? No, you don't get his other name. Anyway, he's in a sanatorium now, coughing his lungs out. Well, we've been out in an evening's drinking. We're on our way home and we saw these two men. One of them was holding up the other as though he was drunk. But he looked all wrong somehow, the way his feet dragged. Not like a drunk. Where was this? Somewhere in Paris. Well, the one who could walk heaved his friend in the back and drove off with Victor and me, we borrowed a car and followed them. Why? We thought there might be something in it for us. And there was. We drove to the Canal Saint-Martin, stopped on the edge of it, heaved his friend out and dropped him in. There was a splash. That was all. And we said good evening. What did he do? <laughs> Nearly followed his friend. We got him back in the car, made him drive us to his home. Where was that? That was in Paris, too. His name? It's always Monsieur X in blackmail cases. Mm. You get much from him? No, not really. A few hundred francs at a time, with no experience. But it went on for two years. Why not forever? No, he skipped, vanished. Didn't see him again till three months ago. Just before this little episode. You uh, spoke to him? I only saw him. Where? It was at a dancing place on the river. What's that? Called the Gangetta de Sioux. He didn't even recognize me. Whereabouts along the Seine? You're a detective. You find out. That's your job. 
All I say is that Monsieur X would do just as well in my place on the... Will... Will you be there? Here. Au revoir. Well, then, my. Good morning, Patron. A bit warmer today. It was cold earlier. Lenoir? Yeah. Never been to one? Once. I used to think one ought to see everything. Well, anything new? No, the real crooks are on holiday. Well, in a week I shall join them. <laughs> Madame gone already? Yes. She's in Alsace eating foie gras and coq au vin. Good for her. Oh, uh, Lucas, I want a description of all bodies fished out of the Canal Saint Martin in the last four years. And a list of licensed ganguettes. The ganguettes? Which area? All oh, along the Seine. You know, the sort of drinking, dancing places they go to in the hot weather. Up or down river? I don't know. You take upstream, I'll take downstream. Uh, who owns it? Uh, no idea. Well, do you know the name of the place? Yeah, of course I do. It's called the Ganguette à Deux Soupes. Does it let rooms? Apart from its name, I know nothing whatever about it. Except that one murderer said he saw another murderer there. A de Zan, de la Belle Aurore. The Trois Quiet. De la Petite Madeleine. De la Peniche. Sangle Bleu. Du Corsair. Ah, dessous. Quiet, I see. What? what? Here, up at Marsan. They let rooms. That's it. Well, it's a nice day for a trip up the river. Uh, for me? No, for me. Ah. Are you going now? No, those places are dead until the evening. Saturday. Well, anyone who goes there regularly should be there tonight. Of course, there may be nothing in it, but if I'd been Lenoir, I wouldn't have lied. All right, don't wait for me. Oh, 
Splendid, Meinstein. Splendid. You took him in. <laughs> this is the bride's mother. Did you? I am the Lord Mayor. We're having a party. Join us. Have a drink. We're all drinking pastis. One, two, three, four, five, six pastis all around. Is that to have any port for me? Of course, port for my wife. But pastis for my friend here. This is a wedding. You do understand, don't you? How can he understand? Oh, no, Piero, not that dreadful noise. Not now. You're supposed to be a village idiot. Behave like one. <laughs> <laughs> Village idiot. He's got a good start, hasn't he? <laughs> it's only a joke, you know. <laughs> to liven up the weekend. He knows. Yes, we come down here every Saturday, you know. Yes, but none of us has had a wedding for such a long time. We thought we'd have one now for a change. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. Who's this? Uh, oh, well, I'll go and see. <laughs> Oh, it's the doctor. No, no, no. <laughs> the father of the bride. <laughs> oh, no, colonel. <laughs> A drink for the father of the bride. Hello, who is this? This, this is a wedding guest. Oh, no, we, we must give him a part to play. Uh, what about the notary? The notary, of course. Oh, I forgot the notary. You must be the notary. The representative of the law. <laughs> well, that shouldn't be too difficult. What do I do? Ah, I've forgotten. What did the notary do at our wedding? Chew tobacco! Chew tobacco! <laughs> Ours had a long, drooping moustache. <laughs> Monsieur, the very thing. Uh, la. Yeah. And the pince <laughs> All right. Oh, perfect. <laughs> the very image of a civil servant. Oh, oh. What are you, by the way? <laughs> a civil servant. <laughs> <laughs> All we need now is the bride and groom. <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> Mado! Louis! Cuckoo! Ooh, bad taste. <laughs> Mado! Uh, what are you? Oh, he's nothing. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> Here, have a drink. Oh, the happy couple! But papers, papers, the notary must have some papers. Here we are, this will do. Now, the, the bride's birth certificate, the bridegroom's ditto, father's discharge from the army, mother's discharge from jail, <laughs> and the Lord Mayor's certificate of insanity. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> uh, no, will the, um, the, the happy couple please step forward? <laughs> <laughs> now, Maddo, in the name of the Republic and the overseas territories, including Madagascar, <laughs> do you undertake the following duties, namely, to be a faithful and ever-loving spouse to this subhuman ape standing at your side. <laughs> <laughs> to cook his food, to clean his house, to mend his shoes, and <laughs> to, to offer him every comfort that a wife offers a husband for 365 days and nights. Oh, 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 in the yard. 66 Olivia. <laughs> Silence! Hi. Whew, it's cool right here. Yeah. Here's a good party. Is it like this every weekend? Oh, we amuse ourselves. Bridge, fishing, dancing, or uh, I don't dance. Oh, well, it's good to get out of Paris, these hot nights. Mm -hmm. You stay? If I can find a room. Oh, there should be one. I don't stay here. Mado and I have a villa further up. Mado? My wife. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> there she is now. Mayor's privilege. Yeah. Do you, uh, you dance? No, no. What do I? My wife does. She's a lively child. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
We've got to conduct them to a bridal chamber. Get them where? Oh, five bucks. Come on. Mr. Notary. Hey, you want a drink? Uh, help yourself. It's my bottle. Thank you. Can I uh, do anything? Oh, thank you. Two cooks are enough. Ah, uh, makes a change. I work in a bank all the week. Yeah, my wife out there. I didn't notice her. Funny, she's a big girl. <laughs> oh, by the way, my name is James. James Collet. Uh, my mother was English. I tried to live up to it. Okay. Oh, Maigret. Hey, tell me, what's the name of the, of the fellow playing the mayor? Oh, it's Marcel Basso. He's a coal merchant. In a big way of business. That's the rich man amongst us. Oh, richer than Feinstein? <laughs> oh, there's more money in coal than there is in socks. Socks? Well, he's got a shop on the uh, Boulevard Poissonnier. Uh -huh. Well, this uh, Basso seems quite a character. <laughs> yes, he's the leader. Mm. Oh, the, the whole gang would fall to pieces without him. Well, it's not really a gang, of course. <laughs> so tell me, is there any uh, possibility of my finding a room here tonight? Oh, I expect that's all right, yes. Hey, you, you look at all that passage outside. Is the room free? It's yours. Right. Well, you like the place? It's pleasant. Oh, it's a nice informal atmosphere. Plenty of discreet little corners if you're feeling lonely. Oh, I think I'm just a little too old for that. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, uh, I drink too much. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Much, much too much. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> we'll have another bottle, you know, when we finish this one. Uh, <laughs> that won't be very long. <laughs> ah, fireworks! <laughs> Not me. Don't let anybody out. Name. Name. Marcel Basso. Marcel Basso. Coal merchant, yeah? Kate Bercy, 78. Kate Bercy, 78. I didn't shoot him. Who did? Then what happened? Did he shoot himself? Whose is this? Mardo's, I think. His wife's? Where was she? In the hen house. It was the bridal chamber. Only a joke. You're going to arrest me? This isn't my district. The examining magistrate will be along in a moment. But you are police? Yeah. What are you doing here? Pure chance. It's funny. Almost as if it were, As if it was a... What? A trap. Poor old Feinstein. You knew him well? Off and on for years. Hmm. And his wife? Of course. How did you know this was hers? It's a woman's gun. Yeah, but you knew it was hers. Well, she showed it to me once. Here? No, in the apartment in the Boulevard de Batignol. Oh, you used to visit them? Of course. With your wife? My wife? Well? With your wife? Sometimes. 
Was Feinstein there? Yes. Always? What, uh, what did you do? We played bridge. A three-handed game? Yes. And when neither Feinstein nor your wife was there, what game did you play? No, find a boat, quick. No, Basso, come back, you fool. Where's the telephone? Through those doors. Sunday. Well, well, yes, I did say we go swimming, but oh no, Mimi, no, oh, but, but Mimi, oh no, look, we can't stop everyone from murdering each other on Saturday night, can we? We can try. Uh, oh, that's wrong. Uh, hang on, Mimi. I promise that we go swimming this morning. Oh, Mimi, do be quiet for a minute. Uh, well, go on. Well, uh, <laughs> tell you I'll be free in a few minutes. <laughs> look, meet me in the Marlado in twenty minutes. No, no, no. I'll explain then. All right? Goodbye, chicken. Oh, I'm getting too old for that. No news of Basso? You cross the river, you've seen on the towpath. Uh, all the stations watch, all the roads watch. And the bridges. Uh, that's all you can do. You think Basso did it? He was holding the gun that shot Feinstein. And it was the widow's. She doesn't deny it. She says her husband bought it for her to shoot burglars with, but she hasn't seen it for weeks. Mm. Ah, oh, this killing's a nuisance. Yes, indeed. Perfect. Not only because it's a weekend. It's not the one I'm investigating. They were they were a jolly party. Lots of more or less innocent fun. I thought one of them might be a murderer. Now oh, one of them's a victim. <laughs> oh, go on, go and see your girlfriend. <laughs> oh, you wanted to know about bodies found in the Canal Saint Martin. Yeah, how many? Uh, six. Two women, one Algerian, three unidentifiable. Enjoy your swim. <laughs> Anyone in the finance section on a Sunday? No, no, there wouldn't be. Thank you. Inspector Megrich. You call me? Oh, uh, everybody calls me James. Are you often here? One, one needs somewhere one can call one's own. I came back to Paris this morning. Mm. We could hardly fish and play bridge after well, what happened. What did happen? Feinstein died. Uh, waiter, two pasties, please. You know, the magistrate thinks that for some reason Feinstein attacked Basso, who snatched the gun from him and shot him. Oh, which is absurd. Why? Feinstein had wanted to shoot Basso, he'd have done it. But he, he had no reason. No? I know Basso was messing about with Maddo, but well, it's hardly a reason. Wasn't Feinstein jealous? <laughs> Feinstein had been jealous, but well, most of the male members of the gang had been dead long ago. All of them? Well, not quite all, but Maddo's that sort of girl. You, you start by dancing with her, and it doesn't quite stop there. You too? Huh? No, I. I don't dance, remember? Oh, where are those drinks? Oh, here we are. Drive a car, Jane. No, no, I, uh, I drink. Oh, besides, I, I haven't got a car. Which of you has? Well, it's the doctor, Basso, of course. 
Not Feinstein. No, no, the, uh, the Bassos always gave him and Maddow a lift. Mm. He was on good terms with them. Feinstein was always on good terms with his wife's admirers. He, he owed them all money. I don't think Maddow knew, but uh, he'd wander up to her latest, ask for the loan of a few hundred francs, a cash and check. Oh, nothing said, of course, it was just a look, but well, they always paid. Telephone call, monsieur. Oh, it's my lady wife. Oh, no, monsieur. A man. Excuse me, Inspector. Hello, Inspector. Hello. Uh, I looked for you after that telephone call. Why, why did you leave the cafe? Did I miss anything? Several drinks. Well, here I am. And, uh, come in. Uh, I regret my, my wife is out or the place would be tidy. Uh, mm. Pastis, wasn't it? Uh, take the sofa. It's the most comfortable. Thank you. Busy day? Routine. A lot of our people are on holiday. Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I was... You going away? Holiday? No, no, not this year. Uh, last year we went to Royal. Good oysters. Yes, it's decent wine, too, but uh, yeah. well, too many people. I, I, I think I prefer the weekends by the river. Will you still go to the Gangits? I don't know what else we do. One carries on, you, you know mm -hmm. how it is. It's a very nice place you've got here. Is this the bedroom? Uh, why don't you come down next Saturday? I, uh, you, you could call it a business trip. The, the same old crowd will be there, except, of course, Feinstein. And Basso? Yes. Yes, who knows where he is? Don't you? He telephoned you at the cafe while I was with you. Yes. You arranged to meet him here? Yes. Wanted a change of clothes? Oh, and money. He needed money. What you gave him? Yes, of course. He's, he's my friend. It was his own money. He gave me a check. I suppose you know I can arrest you for this. But you won't. Why? Because he hasn't done anything. He's only got the police of three departments looking for yes, him. Yes, but not for anything. Well, you don't think he murdered Feinstein? Who did? Well, not me. Well, you'd much better come down with us on Saturday. Well, we'll have a lot of drinks. We, we go all over it again. And if you still want to arrest me... All right, I will come down. We're the first. The others will come, I suppose. Certain to. Oh, my wife's sharing a taxi with a couple of them. Oh, where's Marie? She's in the kitchen. Good evening, madame. Monsieur. Any beer? I'll go and get you some. <coughs> you want to look out, Victor? I've heard a cough like that before, and I know what it means. It killed my sister's boy. Hello. Oh, that's the doctor's new car, by the sound of it. I, I must go and see it. He, he's talked about nothing else for weeks. Monsieur James! Oh, well. I bet he'd have his out on the terrace. Hello, doctor. And Madame Basso, I'm so glad you've come. Uh, how's the new car? I'm still running her in. Well, let, let's have a look at it. But we've seen it. We've just come from Paris, innit? Yes, I know, but I haven't seen it yet. You, you come and show it to me. 
I'll take you for a spin in it later, James. Thank you, Doctor. Mr. James? Well, if he's not going to drink that beer, I'll have it. May I see your papers, please? Police, as if you didn't know. Ah, they're on the road looking at the new car. <laughs> Victor Gaia. So it says. Last address. Municipal sanatorium at Caen. There. What did I say? When did you leave? Months ago. And since then? Here and there, living rough. You can pull me in for vagrancy if you like, but they'll send me back to the hospital. I've only got one lung and that's no good. Have you seen him often? Yet? He's never been before. He came here asking if there were any odd jobs. He'd be better off in bed. I suppose Lenoir wrote to you from prison. Who? Lenoir, and don't pretend you never heard of him. You were with him one night four years ago when a body was thrown into the Canal Saint-Martin. You know who threw that body in, and you and Lenoir blackmailed him. I know nothing. I think Lenoir was right. The man is here somewhere. But you're not going to blackmail him again. You're going to point him out to me. I'm going to finish my drink and go. Straight to jail. Straight to the sanatorium. There's nothing you can do to me. Hey, my... James, it's a rat! You can't! Are you mad racing her like that? She hasn't even been run in yet. Yeah, clutch is a bit stiff. I'd get it fixed if I were you. Hello, Inspector. Where's Madame Basso? Where have you taken her? I, I couldn't possibly tell you. You know where Basso is? Oh, uh, not exactly. You've done 150 kilometres. I've only done 40. Very clever. Oh, why? You took Madame Basso to her husband's hideout. And then you came here and raced around the track for a couple of hours because you knew the roads would be watching that it would take time for us to find. Very well planned. Well, it's not really planned. You see, I, I happened to see the, the, the entrance and uh, well, I saw it was open for private speed trials and, you know, as a matter of fact, it's something I've always wanted to do. Well, you might have used your own car. I haven't got one. Do you know him? Never seen him. Or him? Right, hold the doctor's car. Well, what have I done? Nothing but your car is a suspect. Go on. Oh, what about me? Oh, go and get a drink. You'd have thought he'd have wanted me too. The crossroads at N2157 and C253. Well, they're all over the place, aren't they? Uh, hang on. Pierre, your fresh tire on the wheels is not much help. It might be one of 20 places within 100 kilometers. Oh, that might help. And that. Uh, hold on. Michel? Uh, there were eucalyptus seeds stuck in the tar. Uh, wait, 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 eager beaver. A dusting of Portland cement under the chassis. All right? Quick as you can, the patron's waiting. All right, Pierre? Au revoir, gentlemen. <coughs> you think I'm putting it on? I'm not, you know. Doctors give me a year. 
I might die in here if you questioned me for too long. Then you'd get into trouble. You tell me who put the body in the canal and then you can go. Back to the hospital. Thank you. I only want to see a bit of life. I haven't got long. Do you think you're going to get some more money out of him? If I tried to, you'd follow me, I know. Good. So you admit you know him? Perhaps. His name? Is it worth money to you? After all, it's been a valuable secret. Why should I give it away? 3,000 francs? Two, five hundred? You can go. Do you think I'm bluffing? But I don't really know. Get out of here. Show you. I'll give you a name. Ulrich, there's a name for you. Who's he? You go and look for him in his slop shop, Rue des Blancmanteaux. <laughs> you won't find him. Put a tail on the man that's just left my office. Don't lose him. That's all. We've narrowed it down. There are three places where the car could have picked up tar and Portland cement. Gap Monte, jean and La Fertale. Well, they're all small places. Check on the hotels and the local visitors. Right. Any news yet on uh, Feinstein's accounts? Uh, yes, they've done an analysis. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I hate these things. Does it tell us anything? Only that he was always in debt. No, I knew that. Well, he had one or two little tax fiddles. Well, I guess that. Uh, nothing much else. He was borrowing heavily about seven years ago. From Basso? No, a man called Ulovich. What? Where? Here, Rue des Blancs-Manteaux. Victor just mentioned Ulrich. And the same address. Why did he say that I wouldn't find him there? Check missing persons. There is an Ulrich. Jakob Ephraim, 29, Rue des Blancs-Manteaux. Hmm? Second-hand clothes dealer, suspected of infringing the usury laws, disappeared March 22nd. Four years ago. No clues found in house, no sign of robbery. Legal presumption of death after statutory six months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, bodies in the canal list. Uh, July the 1st of the same year, a body found by bargees near the lock. Male, height, one metre seventy. And that tallies. Age between 60 and 65. He was 62. Uh-huh. No further identification possible. All necessary. Feinstein and Ulrich, two dead men who knew each other. Look, you know where he is. Now, why don't you tell me instead of just sitting there like a dummy? I only want to help him. You mean help yourself to him? Funny. He's got his wife. <laughs> that dull thing. Uh, that's all you wanted before I'm going. Thank you. Hello, James. Inspector, you've come at just the right time. I'm glad to hear it. Why is it the right time? Because James is being stupid. He knows where Basso is and he won't tell me. Oh, shut up, Meadow. Do you, James? No idea. You see? Stupid and unhelpful. Basso loves me. He needs me. He loves his wife. Someday we're going to be married. I have a right to know where he is. All right. He's over the frontier by now. So you did know. James, did Feinstein ever borrow money from you? From me? Where would I get money? What are you suggesting? That your husband sometimes borrowed money. Did you know a man called Ulrich? No. Did you? Bug round 2384. Just a minute. It's for you. Thank you. Make it Yes, Luca. Good. Yes. We found your basso for you. Into the car, James. The 
can't do this to me. I know my rights. I wish I knew mine. I want to see a doctor, too. I demand a doctor. You'll have to do with me for the time being. Sit down. Hello, Marcel. Sit down, James. Now, Basso, how did Feinstein die? I know that he was discreetly blackmailing you as his wife's lover. He hardly blackmailed. More like a series of forced loans. Well, I got tired of it. I mean, me and Mardo. I never meant it to be anything serious anyway. So I decided to break it off, and I told him he had nothing more to come. And that night, he said he was in trouble. Debt. He needed 5,000. I said no, and took out a gun and swore he'd shoot himself. But he'd never have done that. Oh, I know that, but you don't think like that when a man's holding a pistol to his head. So I tried to wrench it away from him, and it went off. It's the simple truth. I told you, they couldn't convict him. Not with a good lawyer. So why did you run away? When you started asking me all those questions in the gang get that night, I suddenly saw what it was going to be like. All dragged out in court. Me and Hardo. Shame, scandal. I had to come forward, but I had to get away for a bit. I wanted to see my wife. Make sure that she knew I still loved her. She knows it all now. That deals with Feinstein, as far as I'm concerned. I'll arrange a lawyer at once. Wait. And now, tell me about Uri. You know about Ulrich? I know that he was killed one night four years ago and that his body was dumped into the canal of Saint Martin. Nothing to say. Now, Feinstein knew Ulrich, and you knew Ulrich. And someone who went to the Ganget for weekends killed him. Only one person knows who that was. It's Victor here. Would you believe it, James? He's asking 3,000, no, 2,500 for the information. How did you know all this? Well, it was just 10 years ago. I needed some money and a friend put me onto him. What was his rate of interest? 45%. 45%. You paid him back? Every penny. And you introduced Feinstein to him? Yeah. Well, as you'd paid him back, you had no motive to kill him. And on the other hand, we know that Feinstein could pay him back. So, if he killed Ulrich, case is closed. Well, Victor, did you want to say something? Tell him. Why don't you tell him? You've got nothing to lose. It was Feinstein. It was him we saw throw the old man in. They are my great. There's your answer. What did you expect? The truth? No. Oh, go on, tell him. Now, tell him the truth. Oh, I killed the goose that laid the golden eggs. Hello, James. Oh, that's Victor's motto. Keep the victim alive. Keep the victim alive and bring him. Bring him. James. I'm sorry, Marcel. I know you pay Feinstein to say Victor to say it was Feinstein. It's not worth it. This life I've been leading, drink and lies, it's, it's not worth a sou. I want done with it. You want the truth, Inspector? I killed Ulrich. Get their statements, Luca. Sit down.
Basso has been a very good friend to you, hasn't he? That's one of the best. Then we had a lot in common. Mado. Yes. You knew about me a long time ago, didn't you? Yeah. When you told me that you didn't drive a car, it wasn't true. Yes, I knew I'd slipped up there. Oh, it's like a bad novel. I mean, there I was, comfortably married, leading the same quiet sort of life as anybody else. Until I ran into Maddo. That was my big moment. That was life. I, I was mad about it. Secret meetings. Hotel rooms. All that, it, it sounds so squalid now. It, it wasn't cheap. Well, my word, no. And Feinstein borrowing money on top of it all. He introduced you to Ulrich. Yes. yes. So that I could pay him. I didn't borrow very much, but it, it was more than I could pay back. But once in, you, you don't know what it's like. What it does to a man to be squeezed. Squeezed again by a filthy rat until I felt I was choking. One day, he came to the flat. Maddo was out. He threatened to tell the bank if I didn't pay up. What did you do? Just, just to frighten him. I, I put my hand shut his throat. I wanted him to feel what he was doing to me. What it felt like to be squeezed. <laughs> And then? I... I hired a car. I put the body in it. I took it to the canal some other time. And you know the rest. Two years of blackmail. And you drinking away my marriage and my life. Yeah. No. No, that was my last. If you see my wife... I will. Will you tell her it's not too bad? That I don't mind? I really don't mind. Do you know what I'm going to miss most? Our little chats together down by the river, by the cafe. I was ready to confess several times, but I didn't want them to end. Will you do something for me? Ask them to drink a toast to me down at the Ganget. Well, that's where it all started. It started here. Au revoir, Maigret. Why, James? 